Hello guys and welcome to my Clean Code series, when I talk about how to write cleaner, more readable, more understandable code. In this episode I will talk about naming, why is it worth thinking about it, what to do and what not to do. So let's start. Why naming is so important? We name a lot of stuff, projects, files, variables, classes, functions. People need to read those names. Usually we we think about names for a few seconds and people read those names very often and they need to be able to read them and understand their meanings in order to read the code much faster and to understand it much faster and to not get confused with the names we gave to the files, the variables and the functions. In order to make good names, there are a few things you need to think about. The name should reveal all about itself. It should answer the basic questions, what it does, why it exists, and how it is used. If a comment is needed, usually it means the name is not good enough and you should think about renaming it and making it much more clear. Usually if the comment is short enough, you can extract the variable name from the comment itself. Avoid misleading. If you name a variable user list and it is not actually a list, which means an ordered items collection, where the order is actually important, you're misleading because when a programmer sees user list, it, he thinks that the order of the users is actually important. You can use a user group or just users instead. Pay attention to names that, uh, that are almost identical except uh, one or two letters. Uh, usually it is uh, when taking an item from a, a collection of items, uh, such as uh, logged in users and logged in user, the S from the uh, users is uh, removed. You're not always uh, able to notice when you're using the collection with the S and when you're using a single item without the S. And be consistent with your uh, namings. If you're naming uh, in one place, uh, for example, uh, a variable named shape, and another place you're renaming it to geometry, it can confuse the programmer and mislead him to think that it is another object. So stay consistent with uh, your namings. Make a meaningful distinction. Get user, get user info and get user data are the same things. You cannot understand what is the difference. If you can understand the difference, other programmers won't understand the difference as well. Try to think what are the actual differences between the user, user info, user data, maybe it's actually the user address or the user comments that you're actually getting and rename the user info to user address. If you're using for example a few variables with the same meaning, uh, they're actually different contexts to, to the variables. So try using and describing the context. For example, if uh, you're updating user's uh, information, you can uh, receive the new user and receive the existing user or saved user information. And this way, your code will be more readable and understandable and each variable will be actually given a context of the information it stores. The same user info will store the information that you already have and the new user info will store the information that is actually new. Words such as uh, info, data, information, string in a, I don't know, name string are actually noise words. They don't add any information, they don't add any context and they do tend to make you feel much better with yourself when you're naming stuff, but actually they uh, only confuse the next programmer that will enter your code and uh, read those code lines. Use pronounceable words, so red user or rxp are actually hard to pronounce and uh, the person who reads the word will actually stop for a second and will try to translate to the long meaning such as return user or error exception so why not make it much easier in, uh, and instead of using the short words that are harder to read uh, use the long words which actually don't hide the meaning and uh, the person who will 
read the variables, will actually read them much quicker and will not stop to understand and translate what is the meaning. So it will be actually much easier to read the code. Do not use Hungarian notation. What Hungarian notation is actually meaning is very simple. It means adding the type of the variable to the name of the variable, such as id string, uh, username string. Nowadays, many languages such as c Java, TypeScript and many other languages are actually uh, have static typing and can show you the type of the variable without you specifying it in the name. Moreover, it can actually mislead if you're, for example, changing the type of the variable and forgetting to change the name. So instead of getting the idea of the user as a string, you'll get the idea of the user as an integer. And it will actually confuse because when a programmer reads the variable name, it re he reads the ID string, but he cannot do all the string manipulations and it will, res it will result with uh, weird things such as uh, if you're accepting uh, I don't know ID string and adding a number to the end of it instead of uh, getting the number concatenated to the end of the string it will actually add one to the uh, number itself and it will cause a very very hard to get box. The compiler will not show you an error because adding one to a string or to an integer is actually uh, not compiler because it's a valid action to perform. Do not use shortcuts. Shortcuts are the worst enemy of a programmer. For example, look at this code. Uh, can you guess what the pk means or the user's dick means? I don't know how many of you guessed it, but actually pk means private key and user's dick is not a variable from some porn site. It actually means a user's dictionary. So you can see how it can mislead and uh, the programmer may understand something, something differently from the intentions of the original author of the code. Stay consistent with your concept. For example, if you have a class named userFetcher and it has two methods, getUserById or retrieveUser by email. It can actually mislead and confuse the programmer uh, because if he is used to the get user by ID and will try to find the, net, uh, the method of the email, he will actually type uh, user fetcher dot get and won't see the uh, method retrieve user by email. And it will take time for the programmer to find the method only because you named it with a dif different concept so if you're choosing a concept of fetching, like a fetch class, use the fetch methods, fetch user by ID or fetch user by email. Try to use known names such as list, dictionary, builder, visitor, and many more. They actually bring a lot of meaning with simple words and you can save a lot of time and uh, an effort instead of writing a comment. Classes are usually representing uh, things or objects or concepts and uh, for those usually use uh, nouns. Functions and methods are actions so use verbs to describe them such as change color, delete user, write to file and uh, many other. To summarize to write understandable code that people will be able to read and understand quickly, you need to pay attention of how you name stuff. We need to pay attention that names describe their purpose quickly, clearly and without any double meaning. So take your time to think about how you name stuff, because reading the names you gave will actually consume more time than the time it took for you to name them. You have watched a clean code episode about meaningful names. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment. You can watch more Clean Code episodes by clicking here. If you want to watch other code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you on the next episodes of Program Artists.